Science 101. Some scientists cherry-pick their data, and some do real science, often referred to as black swan sighting. What's the difference between these two approaches? Michael Howey wrote a very interesting editorial about the health hazards associated with electromagnetic radiation. We spent the better part of three days doing nothing but reading studies and listening to experts on the subject of electromagnetic field and microwave radiation and its effect on human health. With that research now thoroughly studied and acknowledged, we're prepared to offer our opinion on the potential health hazards of EMFs and cell towers to residents of Oakville. We don't know. He goes on to say, For every study showing that rats' brains develop tumors more quickly when exposed to EMF radiation, there was another study showing they don't develop tumors more quickly. Largely, it comes down to interpretation of the data and one's preference for certain scientific methods, as well as one's faith in government, industry, and scientists. I can see why non-scientists have difficulty interpreting scientific data and evaluating studies. Without fully understanding the scientific method, interpretations seem arbitrary, and conclusions appear to be based on preference and faith, two concepts that are antithetical to science. And it's not just journalists, but scientists who give expert testimony, as well as their lawyers who make common mistakes about science. William Bailey provided expert testimony in New Jersey regarding a transmission line project. His lawyer asked him the following question. Do you believe the bioinitiative report was an objective report? And Dr. Bailey responded, No. The report was not an objective review of the literature. Note, this report was never intended to be a review of the literature. He goes on to say, Select studies were cited from the entire body of literature, which leads one to conclude that studies were selected to support some of the author's conclusions. His attorney then asked, Can you give us a clear example of the scientific inadequacy of the bioinitiative report and its cherry-picking of studies to support the author's beliefs? I would classify this as leading question, but the concept of cherry-picking frequently is used incorrectly when applied to science. What does cherry-picking really mean? Cherry-picking, also referred to as suppressing evidence or the fallacy of incomplete evidence, is the act of pointing to individual cases or data that seem to confirm a particular position, while ignoring a significant portion of related cases or data that may contradict that position. It is a fallacy of selective attention, the most common example of which is confirmation bias. The term is based on the process of harvesting fruit such as cherries. The picker would be expected to select only the ripest and healthiest fruit. An observer who sees only the selected fruit may thus wrongly conclude that most or even all of the fruit is in such good condition. I would contend that the bioinitiative report is not cherry-picking. So if it's not cherry-picking and it's not a review of the literature, what is it? It is citing black swans. In order to understand the concept of black swans, we need to consider empirical falsification, a concept coined by Sir Karl Popper. Popper is regarded as one of the greatest philosophers of science in the 20th century. What constitutes scientific proof? Popper recognized that scientific theories and the growth of scientific knowledge rests on the doctrine of falsifiability. That only those theories that are testable and falsifiable by observation and experiment are properly open to scientific evaluation. The chief characteristic that distinguishes a scientific method of inquiry from other methods of acquiring knowledge is that scientists seek to let reality speak for itself and contradict their theories when those theories are incorrect. This is falsifiability. Here is an example that may clarify this concept. How do we test the statement that all swans are white? Some would do it by counting white swans. According to Popper, this method is flawed. No number of sightings of white swans can prove the theory that all swans are white. The sighting of just one black swan disproves it. So how would Popper test the statement that all swans are white? By finding a black swan. This is falsification. Scientists now look for black swans, and if they cannot find any, they can feel reasonably confident that their theory is right, although not yet proven.
So how do we test the statement that microwave radiation is safe? Well, we don't test it by counting studies that show no effect. This is the same as counting white swans and is an example of cherry picking. We do it by finding studies that document harm, and this is what was done in the Bioinitiative Report. The Bioinitiative Report was a response to the mantra that we have no convincing, conclusive, consistent evidence that electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic radiation are harmful below current guidelines. Who makes these claims? ICNRP. The World Health Organization. The Health Protection Agency in the UK. The US Food and Drug Administration. This was updated months after the World Health Organization classified radiofrequency radiation as a possible human carcinogen, and after the Interphone study documented a 40 to 80 percent increased risk of gliomas, a rare form of brain cancer in people who use a cell phone for 13 minutes a day for more than 10 years. Health Canada One study showing adverse effects is not enough, so the Bioinitiative report cited more than 2,000 studies many of which document harmful effects for both low-frequency and radio-frequency radiation below existing guidelines. Identifying studies that document the harmful effects of EMFs is not cherry-picking. It is using the scientific method to falsify the statement that electromagnetic fields below existing guidelines are safe. The Bioinitiative Report is not the first report documenting the harmful effects of radio-frequency radiation. Dr. Zori Glazier, working for the U.S. Navy, was asked to review the literature on the harmful effects of radiofrequency radiation. He submitted his paper in 1972 to the Naval Medical Research Institute. More than 2,000 references on the biological responses to radiofrequency and microwave radiation published up to June 1971 are included in the bibliography. Particular attention has been paid to the effects on man of non-ionizing radiation at these frequencies. What did he document? Heating of organs, altered physiologic function. Changes to the central, autonomic, and peripheral nervous system. Psychological disorders, behavioral changes, and blood and vascular disorders. Enzyme and biochemical changes, metabolic disorders, gastrointestinal disorders, endocrine gland and histological changes, genetic and chromosomal changes, pearl chain effect, and other miscellaneous effects. Adverse biological effects of microwave radiation have been known for decades, and for decades, scientific and medical organizations have appealed that these outdated guidelines be updated to protect public health. As of 1997, there have been dozens of such appeals from around the world. What are thousands of doctors and scientists worldwide trying to tell us? Houston, we have a problem. Denying the problem exists won't make it go away. And small measures may not be enough. But there are ways of riding this wave safely, and knowledge is the key.